Okay. Uh, you'll have to pardon any background noise. It's either uh, the zoom on my camera adjusting or it's my iguana, which is in the cage right next to uh, the camera, so you might hear him shuffling around. What I'm doing today is I'm packaging up several snakes uh, to go to their new owners. Uh, this cage is also sold, but uh, in order to get the snake <laughs> in, out of the cage, there's certain procedures we have to do because we don't just throw them in a bag and take off. Um, first thing you do when you're dealing with any venomous snake is you make sure that you know exactly where that snake is in the cage before you unlock the cage. Now I can see her. She's inside that blue box. I'm going to go ahead and unlock the cage. I don't open it yet where I need to do my work is actually on the other side. And this is one reason why I'm getting rid of the snake because, you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> but this is an Egyptian cobra. Uh, she's got one eye, but it does not mean that she's any less dangerous. It's kind of itch. Okay. I'm going to open the cage up and using my handy dandy long forceps, just in case, Slide that over at the top of her. Now, what she's in is a shoebox tote. And what my husband did, because he's such a good husband, lock the cage back up just so you know what I'm up to. Uh, he took a shoebox tote like this. Anything that you can get at the dollar store, they're usually exactly one dollar, comes with a lid. He drilled several holes along the lines right here, all around it. He spray painted it all a dark color. I think all we had was blue, but any color would work. Uh, just something so the snake feels secure and we'll use it. Then he cut a hole right here. And that allows the snake to go in and curl up and that's its hide box. So all you do is when the snake is in there, if you need to do any kind of cage maintenance, need to move the snake, anything like that, um, you can take another box just like this without the holes cut in it and do what I did and just stick it on top and you've got a nice secure hide box. Now the next thing I'll do and I don't have my tape over here handy or I'd do it uh, is I'm going to tape the box up really secure so that the snake can't push it up and get out and then after that uh, I'm going to put it inside another larger tote and I'm going to write venomous on it. And then that way, of course, I'm going to tape it up, make sure it's nice and secure. That way, when I'm transporting my venomous snakes to their new home, I've got double security. Now, another way you could do this is you could actually bag the cobra, then put it inside a plastic tote. Whatever is easier for you. For me, because of where my cage is and because of my knee injury, it's easier for me just to do the trap box. It's totally hands-off for me. And... Uh, it's just safer for me. Now everybody has their own method and some people don't agree with trap boxes. Uh, for the reasons that I just showed you, I love them. So anyway, that's done. She's still locked up in there. So if she does happen to get out, not a big deal. She's not going anywhere. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get my tape and tape her box up and get her ready. And then I've got a pair of uh, Theris Chlorecus that I'm actually going to be uh, putting in a couple of shoebox totes and shipping them out as well, which I'll probably bag them and then put them in the totes. So anyway, uh, some of the equipment that you'll see laying here, I've got just a small homemade snake hook. That's usually what I use for my arboreal snakes. Uh, the cobra hook is actually not behind me. Um, this is what I would use if I needed to. Um, she does not like to hook. She spazzes out and it's just, uh, for me, she does better with those. Most people will recommend against using tongs with a cobra, but, you know, whatever works for your snake and keeps you safe, that's what you do. So anyway, that's some of the equipment next to me. Obviously, I've got a cell phone over here. And I also have this little nice piece of equipment that every venomous snake owner should have and it is your emergency snake bite protocols. This goes with you in the event that you or someone else in your snake room gets envenomated. It has emergency contact numbers of doctors, 
and uh, places where I can get antivenom for any of the snakes in my snake room. So, and I update that periodically, especially if I've changed address, changed phone numbers, anything like that. So, or added a snake. So, anyway, that's something that you should definitely have. I actually have one in my truck and this one here. So, if something happens, I've got one wherever I need it. But, okay, well, I'm going to work on this and then I'll come back and do a second series, which will be uh, the uh, Chlorecus. And then I also have a nice puff adder that we'll be boxing up. So, tune back in with me and check them out. Thanks for watching.